Howdy folks, David Minkin here, starting player with Connect More, and welcome to another edition of... Battle Ball! 3TV, the tabletop view featuring... Mason! <laughs> and David! Alright, what game are we playing today? Battle Ball! That's right, and what do you like about Battle Ball? I like tackling like this. You like tackling that, and are there other things you like about Battle Ball? I even like giving them like this. Do you like rolling the dice? Yeah, I can show you something. Yeah. Sometimes my red guy does that. <laughs> Crunch. Okay, so stay tuned while Mason and his little brother play, and we'll show you how this game is great for your tiny table topper and how much they enjoy it. Do you enjoy it, Mason? Yeah. All right, stay tuned. Let's decide who's going to go first. Me. Me. Well, there's only one way to roll. You gotta roll your. Oh, that doesn't look good, Mason. He might get one. He might get a one, but God's in his favor. What did you roll, Finley? Snowman. What number is a snowman? Eight. Eight. That's right. So Finley gets to go first. He eight is greater than two. So Finley, which guy are you gonna move first? Why don't you move Sasquatch? Okay. So you have to roll a green dice. Okay. But no, I'm not going to move him. I am... Is Sasquatch going to get saved for a special time? No. He isn't. You're going to roll him now? Yes. Alright, let's see him Sasquatch. run. Sasquatch. What did you roll there, Mason? A nine. A nine. nine. Alright, let's see him go. That's right. One, 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 two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, eight, no. eight, eight. Eight? Now you one more. Nine. Nine. Okay. Mom! Hey, Mason, that's why says getting closer to the red guy. Well, your guy has to go for a touchdown in... With the, your guy has to go for a touchdown with the ball. Now, Finley, did you want him to run towards the ball? Yeah. Did you want to try counting him again to see if he can get closer to the ball? Because he's a little bit away. So where was he? Right? Is he over there? Why don't you try counting again, but try counting towards the ball here. There you go. So he, there he's a little bit closer to the football. Is that? Would you rather go there, or would you want to go back to where you were? No, he's not on the football. You need to roll a 10 for that. But yeah. you, you put him right there. Okay, are you happy with that, Finley? Yeah. Okay, Mason, you're going to... He's too on the same I think I'm going to move to a... You're going to okay. move your red guy. There you go. You're going to get him running out there fast? It's 17. Was it? Good, roll. Roll. Cool. Okay, so move it. your... Three run your guy. You gonna pick up your ball? I'm picking up the ball with my red guy. Now, uh, seeing that you're adjacent now to green, you gotta, you guys gotta tackle each other. You go, go green. I go. Whoever has the lowest number wins. That's right. The battle. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. good roll, Mason. Mason rolled a three. Yeah. 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 You got higher number. You are out of the game. Well, no, not out of the game, just out of the uh, out of the half. Finley, yeah. what number did you roll? Okay, I win. Finley, did you see the number that Mason rolled? Yes. A three. And what number did you roll? A twelve. A twelve. So three is lower than twelve. So this guy he's become reduced to a big pile of carnage. You want to grab a like, carnage token? Like no. Now he got he got crushed right in midfield by this little this little scrawny fast running guy. He just plowed your guy over. He was running so fast. So here, let's replace your guy with the carnage token. He was right there. And then now you can put this guy down in your end zone, okay? But now Finley, it's your turn because that was Mason's turn. So it's your turn. Do you want to move out another guy to try to get this red guy down? I want the big yellow guy. Okay. So the 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 one. Two, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
That's six, but Finley, yeah. Finley, you have to roll both yellow dice. So keep that one and roll and roll your other yellow dice. Yeah, let's just roll that one. Yeah. Okay. I can't sing. Same and same. Yeah. That's bad news. Why is that bad news, Mason? Do you know? Because he malfunctioned. That's right. Your guy just malfunctioned, Finley. He can't move anywhere. So what happens, Finley? Is you roll both of these um, both dice together, and if they're the same, he malfunctions and you lose your turn. And he doesn't get to go and anywhere. He doesn't get to go anywhere. So since you rolled those ones separately, why don't you roll them both together? Let's try another try at him. Does that sound fair, Mason? Yep. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so. What? One, one, and one, two, and three. That's right. So you got to choose which one you want to move. You can move your guy one space or three spaces. Which one is better? I want to move him one uh, three spaces. Yeah, let's do it. Well, my one, guy is one, one, two, three. Perfect. Okay, Mason, your turn. Is your guy going to run with the ball? You're going to get some defenders up there for him. I'm going to. I'm going to get my knight out there and this guy out there and my big guy out there. All of them out there. Let's see you do it. Okay, so first I'm going to do red line scale guy. Okay. Da, da. Whoa, 17 again? 17 again, Fanny. Okay, da, da, da. How will I get through? I think you can slip right through that little hole right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We're gonna put them right there. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to hand off the ball or keep it? Keep it. Yeah. That's. You might as well. No sense risking it. Hmm? Okay. So, you can keep going, you're going to end your turn there. I'm getting my turn. Perfect. Okay, so Finley, you're going to move this guy? This is a big, big claw mm. guy is coming It out. looks intimidating, doesn't it? Like, now this guy is going to come out for protection. I, I think he needs to get out there. So, Finley, what number did you roll? Because this guy oh. needs to fight this guy. Is that one? No, three. Is it two? Three. Ah, yeah, it's three. That's right. So, here, you can move this guy three. Yeah, just flip it over. There you go. You can move your die free, Finny. One. No, that doesn't count. There's one, one. Two. Three. There you are. He's starting to come out at you, Mason. What are you going to do to respond to two this? Two guys there. Mm, Lots see, more guys. These guys are looking tough, aren't they, Finley? Yeah, yes, my guy is coming at that. Those little Ooh, guys. Good roll. Uh, look, Mason's bringing out his big guy. And how many are you going to move him? Five. Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four, five. Uh oh, Finley, how are you going to respond to this move? You going to move your big guy too? Ooh, good roll. One, two, three, one. Finley, I think. Let, let him go. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to move him five. Perfect. <gasps> Well, one. I get a big guy's coming at you. Okay. Your guy, Finley. One. one, two. No, that's one. 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 Yep. Two. No, three. Three's over here. Three. 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 I and get. You can keep moving him. Four. Mm -hmm. You can do I, one I'm more. I'm getting closer. Yeah, do you want to do one more? Five. Perfect. There I you got are. closer to the little guy. Yep. Now so I'm doing the big guy again. You're doing the big guy again? Doing him for Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Now, if you slide him over, he's be there. There you go. My so, guy's coming out. Now, if you want, you can hand the ball off to him. Are you going to keep it with your little guy? I'm going to keep it with my little okay, guy. Okay, well, because if Finley comes to tackle you. Because this guy is going to do a big battle at him. Okay, so Finley, what are you going to do? Uh, I did this. You did it. You did it. I am Iron Man. You are Iron Wolf. Finn, you, oh. should, Finn, you should move that red guy out to go with him. Well, let, let Finley come up with his own decision. Okay? No, no, on my turn. It is your turn. I, on my turn, I will move this large guy. You're going to move him? Yes. Okay. He's a little guy, so I yep. need to hold a little guy. Okay, you're going to leave this guy here for now? Yeah. Okay. Ooh, good roll. One. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to move him six. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nicely done. Okay, Mason, what are you going to do? At least coming out with all his defenders. Big guy. Oh, you're going to move the big guy up and tackle? Yeah, because three is different. Uh oh! Uh oh! <laughs> I want to try again. Hey, no, that's just how the dice go sometimes, okay? He, he, he malfunctioned. He, he ran out here too fast. That Mason, that's just how the dice go, roll sometimes. I okay? think I think that big guy gets a damage token. No, he doesn't. He just misses a turn, but good try, Finley. Now, Finley, it's your turn. What are you going to do? I think you should get this guy a little closer. <laughs> you think so? You yeah. Lure him in? Okay. I will get him a little bit closer. One, two. Okay. My guy's a bonus, Finny. Are you, you sure? going to go around this way or that way? One, You're bonus. Two. That's, no, no, that was one. That was one. One, two. Yeah, that'll work. Ah. Yeah, right there. You're going to put him ah. right behind your guy? Okay, Finley, you ready for battle? Oh, Two there you bucks. go. That's a better roll. I think I need to go for a two. Okay. One, two. Uh-oh. So you guys going to tackle each other, you two big guys? Okay, so you both roll both of your yellow dice. I would use the six. No, no, no. You want the lower one. Remember, you're tackling. Oh. I'll do this. No, 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 Finley, you want the lower one because you're in a tackle. You're not moving a tackle. So which I number is lower? Finley. And Finley's not. So what happens to this guy? I want him well, to stay in. Uh, but, you know, you're the one that picked the fight with Finley. He he wasn't coming after you. You're the one that went after him. And do you know what? I got really bad news for you, Mason. See that one? Yeah. This guy's out for the whole game. Does he get a damage token? Yep. He gets I two. Want, I want to put them on. Okay, no, here you go. Here's your two damage tokens. Let Finley, let him do it because his guy got hurt real bad and is going back to the locker room. That's what, Mason, you still got this ball back here. And Finley's got to go all around this carnage to get at you. So, Finley, that was a big win. But now you need to decide. Are you going to go after this ball now? Or are you going to move some of these guys? What would you like to do? It's your turn. I think I'm, well, yeah. my big guy are crushed. Now these guys are going to build up into a big guy. They got to step up. That's correct. Dad, Dad, yeah. I know you have to run out. Yes, Finley. This guy with this claw has to run out. Is that what you're going to do? Or oh, do you want to start tackling these guys at all? Do you want to go after Mason or are you going to keep moving these guys? Keep moving these guys. Okay. No, I am going to have my whole battle out here. <laughs> and, uh, well, your big guy you is are. still okay, there. Guy these two speech. guys are going to get him. Okay. Well, I think I think Come these on. guys should run away. I think he should I run away. I think they should run back. No, no not that guy. I am going to move. No, Finley, you decided to move this guy at the beginning of your turn. You have to live with that decision, okay? So you can just move, move him up one. That's okay. I, I want to move No, no, but you didn't roll blue. You rolled black, and you you chose this guy. So okay. are you going to move him there? Which one are you going to move him to? One. There you go. Okay. My guy is coming in. Okay, Mason, your turn. So you got some decisions. Are you going to bring your defense up? Or are you going to run back? Or are you going to roll something really high and run right through all these gaps? Well, I hope you enjoyed the run through of Battle Ball with myself and my two tiny table toppers. Now, you'll notice that I took over for one of my table toppers there about midway through the game, and that's pretty simple to explain. He's only three and a half at the time of this recording, it's September 2014, and he just doesn't have the attention span as his older brother, who's about four and three quarters at the time of this um, recording, and also his attention span is usually 
shortened a little bit, especially when it's right before bedtime, as it was during this recording. So normally during the day, he'll make it through a full game. Now our game that we play, we abbreviate it. Normally a game is played where you score a touchdown and then you reset up and you play a second half. So there's two halves. We just play until someone scores a touchdown. And that's the beauty of playing games with your kids. You as a parent understand best how your kids respond, their body language, what works for them, how long is too long. And it's always just a matter of sitting down with them and playing. I find this type of game works really well, especially for my two table toppers, the ages that they are, because the littlest one, he just loves the pieces. Well, they both love the pieces, but the little one, there's a very toy-like quality to the pieces here. And in fact, that's why I bought this game in the first place. I picked this up for thrift for $2 for two reasons. The first reason was I saw that there was all these little pieces. I'm like, oh, you know, if nothing else, my kids will just love playing with these pieces. Throw them in a sandbox. It just doesn't matter. You can't buy toys for this cheap. But second of all, it comes with all these different dice. And I sit in there. I'm like, you know what? What a great game this would be to introduce the kids to the roll and move mechanic. As far as I'm concerned, this is probably one of the, the most basic mechanics in gameplay. Now, for kids, lots of times the memory mechanic is relied heavily upon for a lot of uh, games that are out there and I've done videos and I've done whole things on uh, the memory genre but then the roll and move is also extremely basic and, it, and is a staple of board game. Look, might I remind you of this little game here called Monopoly. Well this is roll and move so you have a choice as a gaming parent. Do you introduce your kids with the roll and move mechanic by introducing them to Monopoly or do you introduce them to a different type of game? If you answered a different type of game, the answer is you are correct. You would be doing the gaming service, the gaming community a disservice, I think, if you introduce this to your kids at a very young age when you have all these other choices to choose from. And I'm going to tell you why. Now, in Monopoly, there are a lot of benefits to Monopoly. In fact, Monopoly is my gateway game. I don't mean to sit and, you know, poo-poo Monopoly. I think there's a time and place. It's a classic game. As a parent, I think you should be playing that with your kids. You should introduce it to them because they need to understand where a lot of these other games have been born from, in my point of view. But the thing about Monopoly, it is a, it is, there's only one type of die. It's a two um, six-sided dice, uh, two six-sided dice, and you just roll, and that's basically it. And then there's some negotiation, and for kids their age, negotiation and understanding the rest of the game, that meta game, if you will, is a little bit lost. So I like Battle Ball and some other roll and move games that I'm going to show you, just because it is just purely about the mechanic. There's a toilet quality, and they get to learn about different items in gameplay as well. There's not just one type of die in this game. Here's a D6, there's a D8, there's a D10, there's a D12, there's a D20. There's all of these different sided dice and the thing I really like about it is they're used for two different purposes so it teaches you tiny table topper not only about probabilities and about the numbers and um, the bigger numbers, you have a probability of rolling a bigger number, it's associated with these different characters. So if you're if you're on the offensive and you're running with the ball, then you need to roll big numbers so you can run as fast as you can. But if you're on the defensive, if you're tackling, then you need to be rolling as low a numbers as possible. And you start learning that, well, wait a second, I have a better chance of rolling a lower number with a um, uh, die with less sides on it because it doesn't count up as high as I do with this. And in the game that we just played, you saw that my team tiny table topper. He still loves playing with the red die. He likes the red die. It's got lots of sides on it. He likes the way that these guys look. So he's still learning. He's still learning about the different probabilities. But then all of his red guys just got crushed in every tackle. So afterwards you're like, well, was that a good decision? Was that a good move? And it's an opportunity for you to teach your kids more about probabilities and also about changing roles within the same game. Where sometimes when this guy has the ball and he's running, you want a big number. Whereas other times, if he's trying to defend himself, you want a low number. And so they're able to learn how the gameplay and your strategies might change. And again, it's just rolling dice, but you have so many more opportunities to teach them about different parts of gameplay, whether it be for this game or for other games that they're going to play in the future. And that opportunity, these learning moments, are not present in Monopoly. Um, there are other learning moments in Monopoly, don't get me wrong, but for this um, particular point of view, they are not. Because for me as a gamer, what's the ultimate goal? Well, 
<laughs> I bought this game. It's still in shrink, and uh, I'm just saving it for when I feel that my kids will fully appreciate it. Because Battle Ball and this game, we're going to share all a lot of the same mechanics. In this game, you're rolling different die depending on the gear you are in your car, and uh, and there's just it'd be really fun. It's going to be a car racing game, and I, it's just a great game to play, especially with lots of players. So if you're a tiny tabletop or have friends to come over and what have you, but there's no need to be breaking into this right now. The kids love this. They have names for the different guys. Um, it's got the toilet quality to it. And the other nice thing I really like about the Battle Ball as a step up to this is it teaches you as well that along the course of the game there's going to be a lot of things that will happen outside of your control and you just need to deal with it. In the video I was showing you, sometimes the die roll just didn't work out in their favor. You know, they perhaps they rolled double yellows and their big guy malfunctions when that happens and you end up losing a turn. And that's really disappointing for on them and you can see that just sad look on their face. And I gotta be honest with you, as a parent, lots of times I kind of struggle. I'm like, oh, I should probably just let them re-roll. But then at the same token, I'm like, you know what? There's no harm in just enforcing the rules. I'm not trying to be a rules lawyer, you know, you know, hammer down on my kids all the time. But at the same token, you're like, well, listen, in this environment, we are playing a game within a certain set of rules. And sorry, that just didn't work out that way. But it's not the end of the world. Because the other great thing about kids with their shorter attention span is they've already forgotten it about about it by their next turn and just in a very simple and kind of a uh, low impact kind of way you're able to teach some of these sportsmanship and these gamesmanship skills along with this because one thing's for certain in a game of this size and the amount of dice that you're going to be rolling throughout the course of the game some will be in your favor some will be fairly neutral and some will just be downright bad and then you'll see how disappointed your kids are and especially if sometimes the thing I like about it as a parent is the dice are unbiased. Okay, some of you might claim that they hate you, but I'm going to claim that they are unbiased. And uh, the nice thing about that is then when I'm paired up and I'm matched up against my son, and especially if you have you know an equal matchup, then it's completely up to the dice to determine you know who's going to emerge victorious of that little battle, that tackle, what, uh, what have you. And the thing I like about that is then it also, I'm like, you know, I'm not trying to pick on you, but I'm just trying to show you that, um, you know, maybe I've lined up a better die against yours. Maybe I've lined up a D10 against a D12. So I got a slightly better odds of actually being able to tackle you. And again, it's another opportunity to teach your, your tiny table toppers about probabilities and about basically managing your dice rolls. Because if you want to uh, start getting your kids into some of these other more, you know, dice heavy games, especially like you know, castles of burgundy say for an example just picking off the top of my head is there's going to be ways that you can modify dice rolls well here you learn about dice modification by the actual player that you're using and so you're not really you're not modifying the dice this is probably I'll probably get beat up for saying this but you're modifying your probabilities with that particular die against somebody else and that's a very important lesson to learn so for all of these reasons I think Battle Ball is an excellent, excellent game to be playing with your tiny table toppers. And I think, you know, around three, time to break it out. Like, and again, so your own kids, break it out and start playing with the pieces. Then you can, you know, just before we even started playing any of these games, we just said, okay, well, how far does this guy move? And we just take a die, we, we kind of roll it, and then they practice moving. Because the other nice thing that's great about this board, I don't know if you can really see it in the video, is all of the spaces that you can move are all um, offset just slightly to each other. So there's no real just direct path like for example Monopoly everything's rectangular and just slide your piece along the path you actually have to sit and think about and count your moves this way so again for a, a table topper who is you know three years old who's learning to count you know learning to count up to ten uh, and beyond uh, this is a great opportunity for them to really be able to count and focus on where they're going because when we first started playing this my um, uh, my tiny table toppers when they're about three uh, were always skipping spaces and weren't you know paying attention to each one and understanding you know how to progress forward so that that's really great and in terms of uh, number identification as well you can learn how to count pips up to here in the kindergarten curriculum in Alberta is you need to be able to count to 10 forwards and backwards well look what you got here you got 2 to 12 right here with two six-sided dice um, 
Both my sons can count these now, no problem, and it's just by, by throwing the dice. And then the nice thing about the D20 is that now they're recognizing numbers up to 20. They can count well beyond 20, but then recognizing what that number looks like is a whole other skill set. So my, my small smaller little guy that was in here, he's just starting to figure out that skill set, whereas now my largest table topper, he, start, he can now look at these numbers and recognize them right away. And these are all skills that they've been developing by playing battle ball over the course of the last year or so and so I think that's just fantastic now there's another uh, roll and move style game out there that might be appealing to a lot of people is uh, Jamaica now the thing about Jamaica I've tried this with my tiny table topper several times and uh, with with mixed luck again it depends on what kind of day we're having but the thing about Jamaica it incorporates also the addition of not just rolling dice um, but it also incorporates uh, cards and you know you figure out what you're going to do with each card and that adds, adds a little wrinkle of complexity so I'm just throwing some different options or possibilities out there whatever might work for your family situation perhaps your tiny table topper is a little bit older you might be able to jump straight into formula d or you might be able to jump into jamaica because this game just is gorgeous and the kids just love it because they see all this shiny gold on the front and the tokens and uh just for that um uh part of it all it's really great but for tiny table toppers less than five just in my experience again the disclaimer always is you know your kids best i'm not trying to make any broad statements about what your kid may or may not be able to do is I find that the battle ball is just an excellent, excellent game to learn so many skills and spend time with your children um, that spread their range from just roll and move to probabilities to gamesmanship uh, that's going to go on. Um, it's just great. Now, one downfall, depending again on your family situation, what you're comfortable with with your children. As my kids and I, we love to look at the board and we like to flip it around and really like to dissect it and really get into it and, and go, oh, what's this guy doing? We kind of jump into the, the cover here and make up our own little world and make up our own little stories about what might be going on. Well, in Battle Ball, I'm looking at this box here. I'm like, oh, look at this guy. He's you know, got the Battle Ball underneath his arm and he's going to fend off defenders here and he's running, running down the field. Look how strong he is. He's, he's gritting his teeth and the kids are getting it and they're gritting their teeth and it's it's really interactive and then I'm like and look at this guy in the background he is pulling his head off huh how do I explain to that and like well dad is that what happens when you get tackled you get your head pulled off um no yeah so so then I'm like oh well maybe maybe this is not the most appropriate thing to be showing my kids but then like well no these are half robot half human you know guys and so that's okay to pull robots heads off I guess but so that's one thing again depending on what type of conversation you want to have with your kids and how deep you get into it you know that might be a little bit graphic for some people I'm just throwing that out there but uh, we've we've gotten over it we've got now got these half robot guys and I'm assuming that's what they are in the first place but uh, that was just provided a little bit of a huh that was a weird conversation so later I go talk to my wife I'm like yeah I had to explain to my kids today over a board game that um, ripping someone's head off was not actually the same as tackling somebody but those are fun conversations to have anyhow as a parent. So I say bring it on, those are fun to have. Now, the other thing you should notice here, you'll see here this ruler beside me. This is my game hall of fame for the kids. So as the kids get older, I take the games that they've really gravitated towards and begged to play for months on end, and I put it at the height that they were at while they were growing. And so I'm a little bit behind now. We're gonna add some more here, probably another four more. I kind of do it about once every six months or so. And Battle Ball is on this list. It, it has made the cut for these kids because they just really enjoy playing the dice. And lots of times too, they just come down the two of them when I'm not around, if I'm at work, and they like just to throw the dice and move the guys, but they're not really playing for the ball. They're just moving and trying to move their guys to go tackle each other because they really enjoy that part of it and they're enjoying that having that conflict without having the conflict the conflict within the, the constraints of the game that's again resolved by the dice so they don't really they don't take it personally which is what it's all about you got to learn how to to take these the victories and the losses in a game like this and just shake it off and so that's a really valuable lesson I always try to to bring home with my kids because if I can't do it here in the comfort of my own home I sure as heck ain't gonna let the playground do it for me so I find this to be a very comfortable medium to do it and this game is a good game to introduce a lot of those lessons as well 
well to your tiny table toppers. So I've talked enough. I hope that you have uh, enjoyed this um, walkthrough or this video walkthrough with the kids and I hope this has helped you decide if maybe this is a game that might be good for you and your table toppers. Whatever game that you're playing with them, as long as you're playing, that's just fantastic. And I want to spotlight, put a spotlight on this game because it's easy to find. You can usually find this one thrifting pretty easy and it's cheap and it's just a great, great opportunity for you to be able to spend some time with your table topper. So that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching 3TV, the tabletop view of Tiny Table Toppers. I am Daddy Table Topper and uh, I hope to see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video or my other type of videos I do, Avoid the Rules for more of Daddy's Games. Uh, Avoid the Rules is an acronym for a video of instruction and demonstration that helps ease rule understanding and learning. Easy start. And I do bigger games like Yido, Madeira, um, Lewis and Clark, um, Fire and Axe. I do those styles of games. And uh, please come check me out on Facebook, Connect More Board Games, or uh, uh, subscribe on YouTube. I love doing these for you. If you have any requests or any other questions for or recommendations as to working with you and your family, I'd love to hear it. Cheers.